Welcome back to another bonus video. This is part two where we're going to be installing our new ship's radio. So the first thing that we're going to do is break down our old system and then start the install of the new system. There is going to be some little subtle differences. We are going to be connecting it to our NEMA 2000 backbone as well. So we have had to buy an extra cable. This doesn't come with this if you want to connect it to a backbone. So let's get into it. This is our old radio. It's a Raymarine 54E. I believe the E stands for European because uh, they'll have a European American versions. Um, and as you can see, like it's just very tired. <laughs> um, it's been like this for a while now. This is the speaker that we've got for it. This is our unit. I think actually it's an okay unit, um, but yeah, it's just stopped working for us. So let's take it all out now. So that's the, uh, that's the power taken off the uh, radio. Now we just need to remove the GPS input um, as our one has internal GPS. So we're just going to remove these now. There we go. So that's the old unit removed. Now it's time to install the new one. When installing any new piece of uh, kit, Always be sure to read the manual. I've actually read this a few times now, just to make sure I was doing everything correctly. So I'm gonna keep that next to me. If I get stuck, I'll just refer to it. So let's take the unit out. The first thing we're gonna do is um, put the mounting uh, bracket in place. And we wanna figure out where is gonna be the best location. I actually think where we had our radio already is uh, quite a good location, so. We'll do a dry fit, we'll just put it in place and we'll see what we think. And do it so you can see. Yeah, I think we'll stick with that. Stick with that same location. That seems really good. So we'll get go ahead and start installing those bits and then we'll start working on the electronics. So now I've just managed to push the uh, power cable that comes with a radio up through a hole that we already have and this is what connects. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see but I'll try and show you. This is what connects into this at the back of the radio. I'll just push this in now. So now we have this power which we can connect up to where our radio power comes from. We've got where the radio is going to go. We've got a power line that can go to it. We've got the aerial right next to it as well, so we can plug an aerial in. The next thing we need to do is run some wires or run the cable in for the wireless uh, transmitter and also the cable to attach it to the NEMA uh, 2000 backbone. So now we've got this top bit off. This is uh, obviously where we've got to run our cables. So now I'm just getting the bits out and I want to just see, we don't actually know if we have enough space to run these cables through. So we're going to have to double check. So we know that this has got to go through. If not, we'll have to find somewhere else for it to go. And this one has got to go through. And again, if not, we'll have to find somewhere for it to go. So I'm just going to go behind here now, which is, um, probably about a 20 minute job taking the back off and the ceiling off in here uh, just to open everything up so that we can get access uh, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I've actually got to disconnect our solar because our solar is um, connected up here uh, again you can't really see much this is our solar so I've got to disconnect this take off this roof part and then take off this part here so yes <laughs> I'm camera woman today. So we're just starting to run the cables now. So this is what it looks like at the back. And we're just running the cables through here. So this one is for the wireless and then I'll be running the N2K cable through afterwards. 
and then it will run along there over towards the radio. It's just coming along here now. Looks on and just the right size to go up and round and into the back of the radio. Now we just thread in the NEMA cable through the same way. Perfect. Okay, so that's the wireless transmitter in the right place. We've got the NEMA cable set up and run. I think we should plug everything into the radio now, now and hook it up to power and see if it works. Then if it does, we'll finish off uh, putting all the wires like nice and neat uh, away and continue with the rest of the install, probably putting everything back. Got everything wired in. The only thing that's not installed is the load hailer, and we think we might actually do this tomorrow potentially just because there is a bit of a gale coming through. Uh, so, just in case you can't hear us very well, but yeah, we'll switch this on now. And uh, I just want to see if it all boots up okay, check that everything's been seen by either the chart plotter or the radio, just make sure that basically everything's connected and everything's working. So, we're just going to start that now. We have power. Now we've got to input our MMSI. Okay, so this is all, seems like it's working. Um, so I'm gonna tidy everything up, put everything back together, have a little main for this. <laughs> we haven't got that on there. And uh, look for a place to install the hailer. It's been easy enough to set up. The reason why it might have looked a bit more complicated is just because how our electronics are on our boat. Um, but as I say, everyone's boat's different. Essentially, you need power, and if you've got the wireless unit, you just need somewhere to plug that wireless uh, unit in and an aerial, which most boats already have an aerial, so you literally just plug and play. Um, all this threading wires through is just because all of our electronics is behind this wall, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But yeah, overall, really easy to set up, really happy with how it looks. And we get, it's working, like we're actually getting... Um, we're getting close proximity alarms. Yeah, we're getting alarms. So, so, and the reason for this is because we're in a marina and everyone has their AIS switched on. So it's just basically telling us that we're very close to people. It's a couple of days later now. We've finished the install. Um, the only things that you guys missed is actually we just like wired the uh, load hailer in and that's basically gone through the roof around the back to the back of the radio and that's now installed. So we have everything installed. What I'm going to show you is that it is switched on and I haven't actually took the screen protector off so this is the... Oh, lovely. So satisfying to do. Oh, yeah. The f my first impressions are that it's just really, really easy, quick to like go through settings, navigation, GPS, AIS, I'll show you the AIS, select, and there's your AIS screen. What I'm gonna do is we're actually gonna use this for a couple of months before we do a video, kind of giving our final thoughts on, you know, the things that we really, really like, some things that we didn't find useful, absolutely everything that our opinion can hold, we're gonna do that in a couple of months time. So we're actually going to show you the hailer working now. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we get to the hailer screen. And then, because it can listen as well as be used as a horn, um, or talk spoken through, uh, we'll just show you, give you a little demonstration. So we're currently on the AIS screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit clear. And then with these soft keys, you can go through the menu like this. So we're going to go to PA, and now that's listening. Hello, Grin. So. Grin, hello. Say again. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? So you can tell that it's already coming through the um, the wireless transmitter as well as this radio as well. We're actually going to. So what we're going to do? We're going to talk to Jade now. Hello, hello Jade. Jade. 
Pass it here. <laughs> Is that really low? Yeah. So we've got this on a really quiet volume because it's so loud, uh, which is good. Obviously in the marina, we're just testing it. So we've got it on quite a quiet volume. Go ahead, Bryn. Are you okay, Jade? So you can see that's, uh, that's on just like a low volume. There you go. That's the hailer function, which is really cool. We've also showed you this working. Last thing I'm going to show you is on our B&G that it's picked up the B&G backbone as well, which is obviously fed into here. So we'll show you that, but obviously we've got so much to learn about this. So we're going to go through the manual. And again, that's what we're going to feed back to you in a couple of months time. So let's show you that now. Okay, so we're just outside in the cockpit now. Um, we've got the instruments all switched on. So I'm just going to show you quickly, or as quick as possible, Ooh, not that. So we go down to network device list GX2400 and there you go that is the radio on the backbone and the BNG equipment is receiving it so we're still learning about how, what capability this is going to have for us we're going to have to check with the BNG guys and also read the standard horizon but I'm pretty sure there's really cool functions that you are able to do I'm just not sure yet so yeah that pretty much concludes the whole of the installation video if anyone has any tips or any questions or absolutely anything at all, drop it down in the comments and we'll do our best to try and like help. Um, all the Standard Horizon details are all in the description below, so all the links to their stuff, the links to the website is all in the description below. I uh, just want to say a massive thank you to Standard Horizon again for hooking us up with this equipment. I hope people found this useful. We're going to wrap this up now. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.